Yeah, yes, we have made it through week one of lockdown. So we thought we'd celebrate with some afternoon bubbles, the kind you go into isolation with rather than drink. We asked two bubbles to keep a daily diary of life in lockdown, the ups and downs and everything in between. Hi, I'm Tricia Warbridge, a 73-year-old grandmother, although I must admit I'm still getting used to being classified as vulnerable. I'm here in my bubble with my son and his partner in their rambling place outside Wellington. With two siblings overseas, he was the one that drew the short straw when it came to what to do about mum. Let's pause here. Other vital deets, there are two cats in this bubble. Patience, we'll see them soon enough. And an early warning, Trisha's a social creature, a moviegoer, cyclist and tramper. I must admit, I'm not ideal lockdown material as I'm pretty sociable and I love being active outdoors. Hey, Gravy fans. I'm Bubble number two, the normally uber-active Oliver family of Pukukui. Hi everyone, my name is Leslie Ali Oliver. I'm a mother of four, married to my husband Dan. We own a business and I'm also a certified life coach. In our bubble is my husband Dan, our four young children. We have three girls who are aged 12, 10, 8 and a little boy who is 2. Hold it here. Kenny's the two-year-old. Spoiler alert, you will see and hear a bit of him during Leslie Ali's reports. Lockdown day one, 0930, and the Olivers are running with military precision. Three kids have been doing online lessons already. Dad, he's on a work call, and there's a Lego explosion in the lounge. I'm sitting here with Kenny, my two-year-old, trying to entertain him. Cute, cute Kenny to the right of frame. He's rocking an orange tea and pacifier and carrying an unidentified purple toy. My three biggest challenges today will be the first is my two-year-old Kenny, trying to keep him entertained as he loves being outside and he loves just being in front of the TV and I really don't want him to be spending the whole four weeks in front of the TV. So I've pulled out all this Lego behind me here and that will keep us busy for about the first part of the morning. Then he'll take a nap and then I have to find something else to keep him busy for the last part of the day. While Lissy Ali records her video diary, the toddler is motoring around in the background. Challenge two is working at home in between being a parent and now their teacher. Challenge three, keeping the imagination slash fear in check. Last night I had a okayish sleep. I, my husband coughed a couple of times and that just sent me in paranoia and I couldn't sleep because I was paranoid about does he have coronavirus, what would that mean for us if he did. But luckily woke up this morning and he was fine, he was just coughing. Further south and by day two, small things are already taking on big importance. The highlight of the day was the arrival of our first online supermarket shopping. So there was great excitement as we unpacked it and an even greater thrill for me when I saw my much needed toothpaste coming out of the bag. The other priority for the day, boring as it might sound, has been to try and establish some sort of routine so there's a semblance a little bit with our previous life and mainly to make sure that I'm not still in bed at midday. Shorthand for maintain standards, clean teeth, rise at an acceptable hour. Got it, Tricia. Same day, different location, and the Olivers are peaking early. We were baking some Afghans, and I was trying to figure out where the cocoa went, and this is where it went. <sighs> Chocolate powder has rained on the entertainment unit and lounge floor. We're talking downpour rather than a light shower. Kenny in his green and red dinosaur tea is cocoa dusted too. His smiley face staring straight to camera. Butter wouldn't melt, but chocolate for sure. 12.22, we actually haven't even had breakfast. Milan, what are you up to? Take this unique recipe and chuck in a bit of online learning to boot. It's been really hard to understand. We haven't quite nailed it, but we're getting there. Second part is Kenny, my two-year-old. He is really yeah. bored, not being at yeah. school, is not yeah. much time outside, so it's really showing, especially in the situation that we had today. And the last thing is the house has been a real mess, but I've just had to let it go because in the fall it's going to be here. It's not going to be immaculate, but it will be good and clean. 
Day three's going to be great. That's the sound of the kids sifting through a colourful pick and mix of Lego blocks. Leilani Oliver's building her dream coronavirus lockdown house. Since it's the weekend, we decided to build um, our dream bedroom, our ideal bedroom for if we had to stay in quarantine because we caught coronavirus. Just out of Wellington, with Trisha's literal world shrinking, she's launching into a virtual one. We started this morning with a Zoom meeting with my Saturday bike buddies. So normally at nine o'clock, we're out there cycling around the Wellington waterfront, heading for our favourite cafe. I must admit, the Zoom meeting was a bit chaotic, with seven talkative ladies all speaking at once. Remember, just for the lockdown, the 73-year-old is in a cosy bubble of three with her camera-shy son and his partner. Well, we're now into day four of the lockdown and we thought it was time to take a bit of a stock take, just see what was working and what might need tweaking. And with the start of the working week tomorrow for my bubble buddies, it was also important for them to figure out what work and personal spaces they needed. Translation, are we irritating each other yet? These discussions went off very amicably, and I'm very happy to say we haven't yet got it on each other's nerves. Four days in, and a squirmy Kenny is barely tolerating this team talk. We have managed to stay home for the past four days. We haven't been anywhere. The kids are getting a bit tired of staying at home, so we are about to go for a walk probably sometime today, and we are hoping to go to the supermarket because we desperately need to. This bubble is on the move. Mum, Dad, the three girls walking and Kenny in his buggy. Bliss. Day five and things are really ramping up. There's driveway squats with age-appropriate weights, press-ups and burpees. Ugh. And two-year-old Kenny plays his barbell like a trumpet. Everyone else works up a sweat. Okay. Same day and 73-year-old Trisha, a keen cyclist, is also on the go. Just back from my daily cycle ride. Uh, which I really try to keep up because there's a lot to raise your spirits. <laughs> Don't keep filming. But what a difference a day makes. I suppose it was inevitable after a few days that initial excitement and novelty value of the lockdown was going to wear off. And today is day six, and I must say it did feel a bit flat. In fact, the highlight was the arrival of the Easy Buy catalogue. Time to spice things up with a few bubble extras. Two identical Tonkinese cats rattling around their vast cat jungle. We're not just, whoops, three humans. We're also two rather neurotic Tonkinese cats, Audrey and May. And you won't be surprised to know that I can hardly tell the difference between them, so I call them both Audrey May. They do what cats do the world over. They just sleep and eat. A clue to surviving this lockdown, maybe. For the Oliver family, daytime sleeping, specifically Kenny's afternoon nap, is sweet relief. Something that is really helping us, and it's actually our saving grace, is that Kenny still sleeps in the afternoon from about 12.30 to 2.33, which means yeah, no. that when he's sleeping, we can get Daddy, stuff done and help the kids up if Daddy, they have schoolwork to do, so he's Daddy, about to go for his Daddy, sleep now. Say no, no, Kenny. Daddy. You say night night. Night. Don't forget, like many of you, this husband and wife team is managing homeschooling for three girls, amusing a two-year-old and juggling work. By day seven, is this bubble fever? Hi everyone. I'm just about to ask Dan a question. While Lissy Alley records her daily update, Dan is pretending to tunnel up his nose with all the enthusiasm of a gold prospector just seconds away from a big find. Take two. A bright-eyed Dan at his computer describes working from home with four kids. Uh, I'd probably be tempted to use the word distracting. Um, keeping with the D theme, difficult. And, but also fun. Dan has a sometimes desk buddy in two-year-old Kenny who plonks himself down with his own computer. The week has started to drag for pensioner Tricia. She signs off with this delightful confession. It's beginning to feel a bit like an eternity. In fact, I start to wonder if normal life will ever come back again and what that normal life's going to be like. I find myself in the afternoon increasingly looking at my watch and wonder if I can bring forward happy hour by a bit. 
But I do find that what started originally out on day one is the quite civilised hour of six o'clock for gin and tonic with my bubble buddies has started to de degenerate. So first it moved forward to half past five, then five o'clock, and now it's down to 4.30. But I find even more worrying is at 4.30 I'm tending to have the gin and tonic on my own as my bubble buddies claim they've got to keep working. Anyway, cheers. Cheers indeed, Tricia. Thanks to both Tricia and the Oliver family for keeping those diaries for us. One week down and three weeks potentially to go 